somewhere. You just did that. This is everything you need. Just hmm. did what? Oh, that's cool. That's, that's um, again, the problem is that um, we don't get any statistical significance. So we don't know what's different than what. I mean, we can see things. So um, I made the mistake in one of my classes of writing on the uh, writing on the screen. Uh, I forgot to pull up the, uh, the screen, by the way. Um, but look at this. Uh, just tab it by media type, and then look at the mean conversion rate. So here are online ads before. So this is the con conversion rate of those that are exposed to online ads before the radio. So this is, this is online only. Uh, online ads after, so this is both radio and online. Uh, no online ads before, so this is really your base. It's what you're comparing. It, so I, I've seen nothing uh, here. I haven't been exposed to any online ads and before the radio ad. And this is no online ads but after. And so this is radio only. So we can do, um, so we can look at kind of the, the individual effects here by just looking at the differences. So <clears throat> if we want to see the effect of, of just online ads, it would be, it would be online only. would be um, kind of your before and after. So let's say before and after. So before you've been exposed to anything, it's basically this one, right? 0.61. And then being exposed to just online ads would be 0.829 or whatever that is. And then we would have a difference, and that'll be. <coughs> Is this way too easy? No. No. <laughs> Do you see what I'm what I'm what I'm doing though? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you read that? Uh, so basically, we're just I'm just doing display. So I'm doing what? <clears throat> Subtract online only from our base, and you get a 0 0.21. But again, we don't know if that's statistically significant, and the, re the regression is going to get us that. So the nice thing about this is we can uh, can get these results, and these should be perfectly consistent with the regression uh, the regression output. I should say. Okay, and then for radio, we're doing the same thing. We're doing the same thing again. For, uh, then for radio, again, here's our base. So no online before. So here's our base. And then for radio, this is no online after. And then the difference between these two is the effect of radio only, right? And then uh, for both, it's online ads after, and we can compare that to <clears throat> like on uh, radio only. So for example, if we wanted to see the effect of both radio and online ads, we can compare these two. So really the question is, so in terms of the synergy, uh, the question is, is online ads after, is this 0.85 statistically different from that 0.82? Uh, we can test that. So um, yeah, so we got all that, and we, get, we should get results. 
that match pretty close, to, not match, match pretty close, to, but that match exactly with these results, except now we're going to get um, T stat, so we can test for statistical statistical significance. <coughs> So we run our regression, and okay, we can do all that stuff. So we generate our online, we generate our radio, oops, we generate our online, we generate our radio, we generate our interaction, okay, piece of cake, and then we run this relatively simple regression. And then we just look at we can look at coefficient. So um, again, no online and so this is zero, no radio, no both. So when everything's zero, I've been exposed to nothing, and that's that base category 0.61, right? So if we wanted to see if, if we wanted to see the effect of um, uh, online ads by themselves, then it would be this 0.21. Why why is the conversion rate higher when there's been no expo uh, exposure to online ads or radio ads? that's where the constant is, right? That's our control group. Correct. And it's before they've been exposed to either advertisement. Correct. So why is that conversion are, rate higher? Those are differences. Exactly, because remember, dummies are always differences. It's the difference from one category to the next. So this is the increase. So I actually left up the, uh, 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 the math. But in essence, what we got is uh, so the effect of online ads, the conversion rate for online ads is this plus this, which gives you that 85. Let me go back to the table, or let me regenerate the table. between uh, no online ads before and online ads after, the, the difference between these two variables. And that difference will be the 21. So dummy variables are always differences. And when we're looking at those numbers, is that 0.21%? Point, point uh, it's percentage points. So it's still pretty small. So for example, let's start with uh, 61 is 0.61%. Okay. So it's less than 1%. Okay. And we saw that with those, um, with, the, uh, with the graph, that it was hovering under 1%. And then post spike, it goes up to six, what was it? Was it six, eight, something like that? It's been too long. <laughs> I'm at 13. Uh, let's see here. Let's use the post spike. Uh, yeah, it, it, it goes uh, between 5 and 10%. So let's say 6, 7, 8%. Something. Post spike. So that's right. Okay, so answer me this. When we define online ads, when we generated online ads, uh, it's up there. So when we 
generated online ads, it was either category one or two. Category was one. Category one was uh, this is like multiple screens. <laughs> the football game as well as the other stuff. Three screens. <laughs> Three screens, yeah. Uh, it was uh, online ads uh, before the radio and online ads after. It was one it was one and two, right? So if that's true, if online includes both those exposed to the radio and not exposed to the radio, how does the coefficient of online ads include only those exposed to the on online ads but not the radio ads? Which question didn't make much sense. The variable online. Yeah. So when you define online, it was one if uh, online before and after. It includes both ca both categories, right? One and two, and then zero uh, if not. So it includes those that were exposed to the online. Uh, campaign only, those are your online before, but it also includes those that, that were exposed to the online uh, campaign as well as the radio, the after. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It includes both people. But we're interpreting the coefficient as being only those who were exposed to the online ad and not the radio ad. How is that? But it's the difference between those who are exposed to both these groups compared to the base category, which is exposed to nothing. Does that make sense? It's, it's, it's a real subtle. And is that why we're finding the difference? Well, the, the coefficients are the difference. So each one of these is yeah. a difference of, so, of sorts. So this is the effect of online ads only. And it's positive and it's statistically significant. So it looks like online ads have some effect. This is the effect of radio ads. It's small and not even close to being significant. Does My question is, if online includes both those that were exposed to the radio as well as those that weren't, how are we interpreting the online coefficient as just those that were exposed to the online ads. How are we excluding these after after the radio ad? And the answer is when we when we set radio equal to zero, that excludes anyone that saw. I'm sorry, anyone that heard the radio ad. So that's going to eliminate these after people and leave us only with the online before people. That's how it gets done. It's the same thing with radio. Radio includes both those that were exposed, includes all those that were exposed to the radio ad, including those that were exposed to the online ad, as well as those that weren't exposed to the online ad. And that's a mouthful. Um, and then our coefficient on radio, on online radio, the interaction, is the difference uh, is the effect of being exposed to both. So let's go back to the table. Because this is a really, I think I confused you more than I've been in here. But this is a really cool um, assignment. Let's go back to the table. So because we're saying one is one if they're exposed before and after, and zero if it's only after. That's why it's excluded. No, our, our zero is going to be um, if it's so this was uh, this was I think category one and two, is that right? Yeah. So this was uh, I'm sorry. This was three and four. Three and four, which was I'm sorry, which are right here. No online, but it's before and after the radio. Mm -hmm. And we define radio similarly. 
So if you're exposed to the radio, you are which category? It's right up here. If you're exposed to the radio, you, which categories are you? You're two and two. four. Two and four. And four. Right? So notice that there's overlap between these two groups. Right? Two is in both of them. But once we set this equal to zero, then it's going to exclude that category, and all you're going to be left with is people that were um, exposed to the online ad. And then radio times online is just radio times online. Uh, times online. And radio and online will only take a value, will take on a value if both of these are one, right? So both of these are one in, in the situation where you've been exposed to the online, uh, yeah, exposed to the online uh, and after, and exposed to the radio. Yeah, and exposed to the radio. So radio times online will only be true if you've been exposed to both of those. Which is only online ads after. Exactly. Well, as well as, uh, as well as, uh, it's going to be uh, online ads after. Yeah, which will be online ads. That's right. Just be that one. But let's see. Uh, so, uh, as, as simple and easy as this is, um, as this table is, it really doesn't tell us much about the statistical significance. We really need to know the, the answer of. Um, uh, so here's our base, um, online ads before, are these statistically different from each other? And then for radio, it's no online ads after, are these statistically different from each other? And then our online ads and after, um, is that going to be statistically significant? And you really, you can't do that unless you do some sort of test. Regression is the best way to do that. Some sort of statistical test. Is that what we got? I'm not going to pick up any. Don't look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I got the right numbers, but my there was a piece of information that I was missing, so I don't think my explanations were very good. And it, it really boils down to, can you interpret what you just did? Yeah. Um, you got to be able to, to do that. So we got t-stats in this table. So this is fine. Conversion rate. So yeah, it's just some some form of kind of before after difference. Um, so for example, uh, I'm trying to remember how I put that in the key. What we want um, before after. So this could be um, radio. Online, something like that. So let's see before. So for radio, so only radio, let's just do the only online. Um, we're going to have the same, this will be the same, right? 0.61. 0.61, same base. For radio only, it's going, uh, it's going to be uh, no online after, it'll be 0.64. And then here's our difference, which is 
0.0 whatever that was. And then for online only, it'll be uh, online. Online only 0.82. Yeah, where is that? Online before 0.82, 0.83. And that's that 0.22 something. So let's go to the Okay, so for radio only, that should be 0.03. Yeah, that's about right. Again, we got some rounding, but that works out right. Uh, and then, uh, and then for online only, it's about 0.21. 22, I guess we round right. 22, like that. But now we've got uh, like that table. You've got some t stats, and really we want to look at these t stats. So we know that the 0.03 is not statistically significant. It's got a t stat of tiny, 0.36. But our online only has got a nice big t stat of 2.28. How do we do the synergy? So did the two combined work better than, than the one combined. Hmm. Would you? Here's a good question. So let's do synergy. All right. Let's do that. So let's see what's going on. So we know that if you saw both it's going to be online after, which is 0.85. So we know what goes here. We know what goes there. Would we compare it to the same base of 0.61? Right, so online only, we compared with the base of I saw nothing, I heard nothing, here's the effect of radio. Online only, I saw nothing, I heard nothing, here's uh, online only. But for synergy, so do we want to see that? Got one. What's that? Radio or online, something like that. Yeah, because you really can't start from seeing nothing to seeing, because if there's synergy, it means that the, the combined effect is going to be greater than the individual effect. So we probably want to go with... Um, Three. So did did adding radio uh, improve my online only results? Something like that. Yeah. So that's how we would do it. And that's the coefficient on the interaction. It's negative. Uh, it negative? Because I took the difference. Yeah. So what we're doing here is taking the difference. Um, yeah, taking this difference, which is 0 0.02, something like that. Right? So it increased by 0.02. And then we took the difference of the difference. Remember what the triple interaction is, it's the difference of the difference. Then I subtracted it from the radio. And that's the difference in difference. And that's why we get the negative 0.1. Now, given all that, um, I 
That's why those graphs really help. Looking at those graphs where there, those lines are pretty much on top of each other, the uh, conversion versus the, uh, uh, the conversion rates of the exposed and not exposed. That's why the, the graphs are, um, are really important. Because then you can look at those graphs and someone in marketing is going to say, well, I see a difference. I see a gap between the two. And you can see, yeah, but it's not statistically significant. And you get the regressions back there. Yeah, there's a difference, right? Uh, oops. Well, except for online. Looks like online had uh, a, a, a small um, effect. But it is statistically significant. And by the way, that small effect disappears for the post uh, gap regressions, right? Anyone see what that spike was uh, in terms of time, where that spike occurred? It's the last, uh, it's the last uh, few days of this ad campaign. So if you look at the campaign, it's really the, I think it starts at around five or six or so. So something happened at that time where they must have, um, the firm must have, I don't know, offered some sort of incentive to engage in this activity. There's just no way that it's a natural occurrence. Um, I don't know what it is, but I know it's something strange. They didn't tell me. They told me part, part of the story, but not all of it. All right. Um, it's raining now. What's that? I was just saying it's raining now. Is just, that us? Just washed my car yesterday. Pissed. I think it's just the wind, bro. I got my sunroof open right now. I don't think it's right. I've had it open all the time. Is that right? No, it's the wind. It's hot. Sure. All right. We'll see when we get to the You're going to play my car. One of the things, let me try to split this, this, this class up into two kind of categories of Analytics. One of them is time series, which we're going to do today. Um, in other words, you're going to have this, you're going to get this data. And um, it's going to be just a couple of years worth of data. Sales and advertising, something like that. And essentially what we want to know is kind of what's the effect, how do we measure the effect of, of sales and advertising over time? So you're going to have two, right, you're going to have two, uh, you can have, yeah, sales and advertising. Uh, so let's just say, here's sales. What we want to know, what we want to try to see is as a firm spends more money, what happens, yeah, what, is, what is the effect of advertising on sales? So this is time. And this is just dollar sales. So for every dollar you spend, and again, there's dollars being spent everywhere, but we kind of want to see, do we get like a spike? And then does it come back down? Do we get a bubble like that? It dies off. That, that makes sense? And this would be, you know, think about a, think about a, uh, a commercial, uh, advertising campaign that runs. It kind of builds up on each other. The effect of the of the commercial peaks, and then it starts to die down. So that's a possibility. Or does it? Do we get some big initial? Uh, effect of the advertising expenditures, and then it starts to die, uh, die off. So, boom! Here's the effect of it, and then it starts to to die off or decay. So, what is the right way to model these things? And by the way, here's a big spike, and then I mean you can use the word decay. The effects of advertising start to decay over time. So, to model decay. You take uh, what is that? Chemistry when you study radio radioactivity. And how'd you use? What's that? Half-life. 
And how'd you measure half life? Back in chemistry. Hey, I got you a buzzword. That's all. I yeah, <laughs> exactly. You measured it. You measured it using these geometric decay models. So we're going to do some really cool stuff. So we're going to we're going to we're going to try to see we're going to try to see which mo which model best explains the data. So if we see something that looks like this, so we're not going to just impose these um, these structures on the data without first looking at the data. So if, if, the, if the spike appears to do kind of have a gradual buildup and then die off, then we shouldn't use this geometric decay model. If it looks like this, we need to use something that more approximates that. Uh, but if we do see something like this, where you see this incredible, uh, like this big spike, and then it starts to decay, then we've got to use some geometric decay model. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do these kinds of things. On top of that, uh, I'm hoping to get to the models where we can see if um, see if we can do this, decay, and then maybe change the trajectory entirely. Really cool stuff. Um, and because it's over time, these are called dynamic models. And so we're not going to do. We're not going to do a whole lot more than what we already We're going to run regressions, but we're just going to add some elements to the regressions. And what, what becomes difficult is the interpretation of the results. <laughs> because we really have to, to uh, you know, we're going to run a regression, you're going to get some results. But then we're going to visualize it. And visualizing it means we're going to have to show it graphically. And we're going to have to be really careful in how we do that. And ideally, what we're going to want to show are kind of these pictures here. This is the effect of average eyes. Because think about what you can do. And this is, this is really cool. But think about what, what you can do. Eventually, we're going to want to, this is going to be called the advertising effect. And it's, and this is going to be time. And it's essentially going to be the coefficient from the coefficients from our regression. So we're going to have multiple coefficients. But if it's that, if it's that bubble look, you can always think about the practical applications of this. What are the ram what are the ramifications for the firm? The ramifications for the firm are one, we know the duration of the advertising effect. Here's when we started it. Here's when it died out. Here's when it ended. We also know when the peak effect is. So here's the peak effect. So if we're, depending on our goal, if we're trying to 